Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce cost, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Welcome to our new viewers, and welcome back to all of you joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. Grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today, we're gonna to be visiting with one of the finalists from Shark Tank Bowling Style. We invited all of you from around the country to share with us your best league ideas for a chance to win $5,000. Then fellow proprietors from our league development committee selected the six finalists who presented their league concept to the Sharks at our recent bowl expo in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, it was so well received, we invited all six finalists back to join us and share with you their league concept. So this morning, we're joined by Wendy Feger. Let's take a look at her introduction from Shark Tank Bowling Style. Located in the crossroads of America, Beaver View Bowl is in the heart of Beaver Creek, which is a suburb of Dayton, Ohio. Originally opened in 1963 as a 24-lane center, it is currently the largest center in the Dayton area with 64 lanes. Currently owned by the Wilson family, Beaver View Bowl is passionate about youth and the future of our industry. Home to the largest youth program in the area with over 400 bowlers, including over 250 in their after school programs, the center plays host to five area high school bowling teams with numerous state titles as well as nationally ranked Wright State University. Presenting on behalf of Beaver View, our general manager, Wendy Feger, and assistant GM, Levi McCoy. Well, good morning, Miss Wendy, and thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on being selected a finalist. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It was an exciting time for us all here. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, you and Levi did a great job presenting. You, you, you know, all of us love the passion you have for youth. So before we dig into your awesome concept we want to share with all our viewers this morning, tell us a little bit about the experience. How was it getting in front of the Sharks and, and that large of an audience? You know, it's so great to have everybody back together. It had been too long where we hadn't been able to get together and talk about bowling, which is our passion. It's what everyone loves loves about it. We wouldn't be in this business if we didn't love bowling. Uh, it was, yeah, again, to get up there and talk about bowling and bring about Bowlapalooza out to everyone, it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. Uh, well, again, you, you and Levi did a great job. We're go we appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. Exciting concept we want to share. So before we get into the specifics of the program of Bolapalooza, I'm always fascinated by where did the idea come from? How did you and the team, how did you come up with this concept? Uh, well, you know, it came up from, we always have had a traveling league here in the greater Dayton area. And our 8 to 14 year old <clears throat> age group, we couldn't we only had two other centers that could do it. We had five teams, another center had one, and that really isn't much of a traveling league. So we sat down and said, what can we do for these kids? We wanna keep them going in bowling. We don't wanna lose them. There's so many other opportunities for them. What can we do to bring them back here every week? And that's where Bola Palooza came about. Awesome. Well, great. So, hey, uh, I'm not probably part of the target audience, but uh, for the youth that are that fit into that, that demo there, if they came into the center and saw your smiling face on a, on a weeknight or a Saturday morning, uh, what was your, what's the 60-second elevator pitch you'd give them on why they'd want to give Bolapalooza a try? I tell them I have the most unique format for a fun afternoon that you are never going to get to do anyplace else. You're gonna to get to do doubles, singles, teams. We're gonna do it all, and we're gonna do it on Saturday morning for the next 20 weeks. Hey, I love the we're passion. I'm, I'm in, I'll do it. I'm not even qualified, but I still wanna do it. So uh, good, you got me hooked there. But as an operator, uh, you mentioned some of the things that we'd be doing. Walk us a little bit through the program and how it works, and how did you kind of come up with, uh, what, you know, how to execute this thing? Well, our, our thing was, is we wanted to keep the kids engaged. You know, we weren't gonna be, oh, wow, we get to go over here, we get to go over there to this center or that center. So why am I gonna bring them back here? Well, I'm gonna bring them back here because I'm gonna do something different. Uh, today, you're gonna bowl with uh, little Johnny over here and you guys are gonna work together as a team and we're gonna do a little nine pin no tap. Or we're gonna do, a, you're gonna work together in this group of three. You're gonna be a trio and you're gonna take out another three. 
um, you're going to come in and maybe today you're going to bowl with Justin over here, who's a 200 average, and the two of you are going to take on the world. Um, we did a lot of different things. We, we even went as far as changing up each different frame, where it would be a regular frame, be a nine pin no tap. We do mulligans, you know, there's all everything out there that we could come up with and change it all around. And at the very end, we took these kids by their, their averages and we put them in groups of four and said, all right, you're a tribe. You guys are gonna go out, you're gonna bowl, we're gonna have you bowl three games and we're gonna see who's, who's top dog. Whoever is top dog, we're gonna take you and put you against the top dog of another tribe. And all these tribes, and you're gonna represent those people that you just beat. So with that, they then would stick around, they cheer each other on, and they, at the very end, we had a great mom, she's very artistic, which I am not, and she painted up some bowling pins for the kids, and she made four of them, so that's where our tribe came from, and at the end, they all got a pin that was in a different theme for their tribe, and watching them just hold it high in, and the smiles on their faces, just, that was the accumulation of the whole thing. We just created such a community, such a group of great kids. Um, they, and they started hanging out, going to other tournaments, just having a blast together. And at a 64 lane center, if I can create any sort of community and any reason for those kids to come back and want to see their bowling cousin one more time, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah, I, I, I love that, Wendy. I love that kind of sense of family and you got them together as a tribe. I love that term. So. Um, just so our, our listeners, our viewers today understand, if I heard you properly, that uh, you got a lot of different concepts, but I'm not necessarily bowling with the same people all the time. I can be doing different formats with different people. That is correct. So today, you and I may be on the, on the lane, um, not necessarily bowling with each other, but you and I and uh, Levi or Doug, could all be together and we'd be on the same bowling independently trying to beat up on each other the next week um sue and i could be bowling as a team trying to take on perhaps doug and jonathan um you know it just really depended as you see with we've got some great pictures of different ages boys girls boys together um we had our 200 average 14 year old bowling with a young girl who had just started and she was her average was 57 they bowled together as a doubles team and he goes yes i have handicap we're on let's do this and that was in the beginning and four four weeks eight weeks later they'd be here on saturday morning bowling and they're in their own separate leagues but they'd be walking down to see each other and they'd high five each other I mean, that's just, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I love all of the, the extra benefits you get out of your program by mixing them together like that. That's uh, in, in, incredible there. So tell us a little bit about, um, it, it's obvious that, you know, the kids are having a great time and it's generating the next, um, you know, generation of our, our, our bowlers. But from an operator's standpoint, what has been some of the uh, results there? Tell us a little bit about the financial impact and the, um, you know, what kind of reach you've had with this program. First off, the benefit is the lineage. So this is a league, so they have lineage that they pay, and uh, we had a little bit of prize fund that went to prizes at the end. But we got to see lineage. We didn't have that consistent lineage beforehand. So this is a brand new league, and that's always great. Um, we watched the parents and the kids go down and have lunch together. It started out as, you know, one family. Then grandma and grandpa came along with them and they all had lunch together so they could stick around to see what they were gonna do in the afternoon. Cause they had, we did a lot of education with this. They had no idea what the format was gonna be that afternoon or who they were gonna be bowling with. Pretty soon it grew to six, eight. We at the, at the end, we probably had about 24 people sticking around for lunch. So our F and B went up. Um, I was able to keep additional staff person just a little bit longer past the end of our Saturday uh, morning league because our Saturday leagues would get done about 11, 11.30, and then we'd run this at one o'clock. So we got lunch revenue out of it, we got lineage out of it, and we got bowlers bowling in more than one, than one league. Um, 
our adults and it, it appearance they were fun they were cho they were rooting on every kid like it was their own um and what that came to is our parents were seeing all the fun the kids were having that i, I know we're if you're asking me where i'm going to go with this i'm going to tell you i'm, I'm going to start an adult division they're going to bowl right alongside the kids um they'll have a blast we may even intermix the adults and the kids together no, I love that. So, folks, you're getting a two for today. You're not only getting a great youth idea. You got uh, you could blow this out for an adult child. You could blow this out for adults that bolt the same time that are company there. A lot of ways Correct. to go with that, uh, Wendy. That's uh, just exciting stuff. And obviously, you're you're passionate about this. So, hey, if we were sitting around a table wrapping up a day of networking and meeting, and I was asking you about this program, uh, is there something you would share with us uh, and our our viewers today that's kind of a a key point? Or hey, you know make sure you do this or anything you learned that you can share with us as we think about possibly giving this program a try it's flexible you know if you look at this and you start thinking about yeah this worked or this uh one week we did uh what's called low ball um three games of low ball that that's hard for the egos that's really hard so be flexible with it um don't get wound up in all the the details with this don't get caught in the weeds per se um have fun with it and if you're having fun with it it's just going to become contagious and that will keep those bowlers just coming back and asking for it for more um it's just flexibility know your get to know your people yeah, I, I, I love that. Be fun, have fun, be flexible. And with this kind of a format, they never know what's coming. If you try something that doesn't work, just don't do it again. It's the beauty of it. I mean, it's brilliant. It's so, uh, it's it just, you know, it's, it's brilliant. So, Wendy, excellent job. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And uh, congratulations on making it as a finalist of, of Shark Tank there. We're glad that you represented the youth. Well, thank you very much. It was, it was a pleasure, and I'm, I'm, I hope somebody else tries this, because let me tell you, it's, it's a success for the kids and the parents. Yeah, and folks, they should. You should give it a try in doing that. And we have an awesome opportunity for you not only to learn more about today's great league idea that Wendy shared with you, but also get a copy of 98 different league ideas. Just visit bowlinguniversity.net and look for the Shark Tank icon to download all those 98 ideas, including this wonderful bowl of palooza that Wendy shared with you. So as we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember that when you're focused on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week at 1015 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7. Just go to bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next week.